Hi, this lecture about Baker cyst in children, or sometimes it's known as popliteal cyst. The objectives of this lecture is we're going to speak about the pathology and the presentation and the imaging of Baker cyst in children, and then we're going to speak about the treatment outlines for Baker cyst in children. Please note that the lecture is uh, uh, addressing the Baker cyst in children and not in adult because it's totally different pathology and presentation. Um, a good source that you can use is Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine. This is the second edition of our um, previous book, written by myself, Dr. Naga, and Dr. Abdul. So what is Baker cyst? Sometimes we refer to it as popliteal cyst. It's a cystic mass so fully, filled with gelatinous material. So it's a cyst that has gelatinous material inside it, and it develops in the popliteal fossa, which is the posterior part of the knee. So this is a child. You, we're seeing the child from the posterior um, aspect, and here we're, we're seeing from the posterior aspect, but from the side. You can see here in the right side, this is so this is the same patient. You can see here in the right side, because this is the posterior part of the right knee, you can see the cystic swelling here compared to here. So this is a normal side. This side has a cystic mass here, and you can see it from the side here, of course, you can see the bulge here. So uh, Baker cyst or popliteal cyst, it's a, gel a cyst filled, filled with gelatinous material that develops in the popliteal uh, fossa, which is the posterior part of the knee. So what is the clinical presentation? As we said, it's a, a mass and a cyst in the posterior knee. Uh, so the family will uh, come with the child um, uh, and will tell you that they, they notice that there is a swelling behind his knee. Uh, this condition is more common in boys and usually it happens uh, in the medial side of the popliteal fossa. Characteristically, the swelling, if you press on it, there is no pain. Uh, so it's, it's a, a painless swelling. Um, uh, you will find that the family will sometimes tell you that um, if the child plays for a long time, he may complain of some discomfort in the knee. However, the swelling itself, when you press on it, is painless. And um, the, what, what is the prognosis and what to expect? Usually this swelling uh, will uh, disappear spontaneously by itself in about 6 to 24 months. So if you do imaging for this um, swelling, the x-rays will look normal. The MRI will show the swelling. So as we said, it's full with gelatinous material. So in T2 images, you will find that this uh, swelling is, um, uh, has uh, uh, increased signal intensity, uh, indicating that it's full with uh, uh, um, cystic uh, with water. So uh, this is the swelling, as you can see here, high signal intensity in uh, T2. And if you, you can see, um, the swelling is in the medial side of the popliteal fossa uh, between the uh, gastrocnemius muscle and the uh, semimembranosus and semitendinosus. So um, it comes in the medial side of the fossa. Here, the, uh, uh, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus, and here, uh, the gastrocnemius muscle, the medial head of the gastrocnemius, and it's separated from the uh, bundle from the vessel, in, uh, uh, vessel and nerve. So the swelling, um, uh, Characteristically, it will be a high signal intensity on T2 because it's a f uh, filled with gelatinous material, so it looks exactly like the ganglion. Um, and it will be between the uh, medial head of the uh, gastrocnemius and the semimembranosus. So what is the management of Baker cysts in children? As we said, it's a self-limiting. It usually disappears in 6 to 24 months. So if you have a patient with characteristic um, findings, uh, a boy with a painless, painless cystic swelling. Um, you can um, observe um, uh, for a long period before recommending any intervention, because as we said, usually most cases will um, uh, spontaneously resolve in about six to 24 months. Um, when um, are, um, do you think about getting uh, more imaging studies like an MRI, as we uh, show in the previous slide, if uh, you see anything abnormal, like if the swelling is uh, tender uh, or uh, it's firm, so it's not a solid mass, so that's not a Baker cyst, um, or if there is a history of rapid enlargement, so the family tells you that um, in the last two or three months, the swelling um, doubled or tripled in size, so you may think about getting imaging studies, making sure that you're not missing any more dangerous pathology, or if there is market pain. As we said, sometimes the um, kids will uh, complain of some soreness at the end of the day, um, but the swelling itself is, is, is uh, painless. 
if you find that swell, the swelling is painful and tender when you press on it, um, you need to get uh, more imaging studies. Um, if the swelling is getting much larger, it's causing too much discomfort for the patient or you observe the patient for a long period and it's not improving, you may think about orthopedic referral for, uh, for a surgical excision. Uh, so here is one of my patients that um, uh, we recommended observation, but the swelling was getting much bigger. So you can see here, uh, this patient is lying prone. So this is the back of the knee. Uh, this is the uh, right knee and this is the left knee. You can see a big, huge swelling here. Compare this to this. So there, there's no swelling here. Here there's a big swelling. Another view here showing the swelling. And a third view here, all this are showing the swelling. Um, despite this being a very typical uh, cystic swelling, painless, uh, it has been growing and the family wanted a surgical excision. Uh, so patient was taken for surgery for um, a surgical removal. Uh, another patient with uh, swelling rapidly progressive uh, and the family wanted surgical excision. Uh, we got uh, the MRI and uh, made sure that um, it carries the characteristic picture uh, of uh, uh, the Baker cyst in children, uh, which is like a, a fluid filled cyst, uh, high intensity in T2, uh, coming between the, the gastrocnemius and medial side and the semibrinosis. And surgery was done, so small incision was done. Uh, this muscle here is the uh, medial head of the gastrocnemius, so it's uh, medial to the swelling. Here is the, uh, the uh, Baker cyst, which is, uh, looks exactly like the ganglion. Uh, and here should be the, uh, the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus. And remember, uh, the medial head of the gastrocnemius um, uh, is uh, what protect uh, this um, dissection um, from the bundle here. So the vessels and the nerve in here uh, so if you stay um, uh, um, if you stay medial to the medial head of the gastrocnemius, you should be safe uh, and uh, not coming close to the nerve and vessels. So again, this is one of my patients. The swelling is enlarging. MRI showed a characteristic um, Baker cyst. However, the cyst was removed because it was getting much bigger and the family uh, wanted to remove it. Um, the, we go in between the medial head of the gastrocnemius and the semimembranosus, semitendinosus. The swelling looks exactly like ganglion and it is removed. Uh, thank you. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.